I'm standing on the steps of what once led to one of London's most fabulous structures, the Crystal Palace. It stood here from 1854 until it sadly burned down in 1936. Now, the Crystal Palace was originally created by Joseph Paxton to house the exhibition of the Industry of All Nations that was to be staged in Hyde Park, London in 1851. Over six million people visited the Great Exhibition by the time it closed its doors. Joseph Paxton was knighted and public opinion clamoured without success for the Crystal Palace to remain in the park. Fortunately, six gentlemen of means came to the rescue by purchasing the complete structure from Fox Henderson, the contractors who had erected and owned the building. And during the summer of 1852, a new site was found for the now redesigned Crystal Palace on Sydenham Hill in South East London, and reconstruction started. Now, Crystal Palace was dubbed such by Punch magazine and eventually gave its name to this entire area of South London. The building featured courts depicting various periods of architecture as well as courts of art and manufacture and the grounds contained fountains, statues, trees and shrubs and the palace was also famous for its magnificent water towers commissioned by Paxton and designed by Isambard Kingdom Brunel. On November the 30th 1936 the Crystal Palace was tragically destroyed in a spectacular fire which was seen for miles around. I can remember my father saying he sat on a hill in Weybridge, 20 miles away, and watched the palace burning. And despite 89 fire appliances and 400 firefighters, the building burnt down. 100,000 people stood on Sydenham Hill to watch the blaze. And this is where John Logie Baird carried out some of his early mechanical television tests. And behind me is the Crystal Palace Television and Radio Mast, which broadcasts television and radio programmes to the London area. It opened in 1956 and at 719 feet high, it's currently the fourth tallest structure in London. What programmes must have been transmitted from there over the years? John Cull from Qantas has been working at Heathrow for 28 years. I think from about the age of 10 I used to cycle to Heathrow, watch planes taking off and that's where it all started really. I ended up working here, which is quite sad I suppose. In 1864, a railway was built on Sydenham Hill. Not just any railway, but an atmospheric railway, and this is how it worked. There was a tunnel 600 yards long and 10 feet in diameter, and a carriage which held 35 passengers. The tunnel had an incline and bends. At one end of the tunnel, there was a steam engine which drove a fan. 
and that fan sucked the carriage and the passengers through the tunnel. It returned using gravity. Okay, I'm headed to the famous Crystal Palace dinosaurs now. <laughs> 